Hello everybody and welcome. Today we are going to talk about the state of the review sites, the big review sites, and what is really the truth, what is happening here. So I want to emphasize that them being bought by one entity doesn't exactly mean much. We already know this is happening for years, but the downfall of these websites are not because of that. It's because no one actually cares about this stuff. No one really cares. Outside of people that go and fanboy online about Metacritic numbers and they put those pictures on Twitter because they are very intellectual, they can't hold a conversation, so they always put, oh, this thing is bigger than this, look at the number, it's objective, and it's not. It's never objective. All of those things are just what this person believes. So that's why one of the reasons that these websites are completely irrelevant now. When you see these websites, these days people don't want to see ran someone random telling them something about a game. They only want to see that when they're pressing a game. And they're like, oh yeah, they like my favorite game, cool. Thank you for liking my game. And they do that and they say, great review. Then there is a controversial opinion and they say, oh no, you hate the game, I hate you. And stuff like this. They're very childish, non-intellectual kind of things to think about things. But it is what it is. Sometimes it happens. Some people always react like that. But specifically here, most people that care about reviews, they don't really care what those publications have to say. And there is a good reason for that. Because these days, there are so much better ways to consume that kind of information. Reviewers that are doing big stuff on YouTube have way bigger say than what a publication has to say. Publication stuff and numbers that are very, very super casual, which is actually the most gamers, that they're going to put some emphasis in if they're going to get something or not. But people that they actually want to know that they're gamers for years, most likely they have already found a voice on the internet, usually on YouTube, that echoes the same things in gaming that they do. You will always have someone, for example, like Morty Mistral, I think I said, maybe I said that wrong, the name, that is the person that always does 100% finish the game, like to have the platinum and say how the game was. There are other people that always talk about how they like the combat. And you know that if you want to know about combat, you are going to go to this YouTuber. And if you care about story, you are going to go to this guy that goes super deep. And if you love story, you probably already following him or found him recently because you resonate with his criteria of saying something is good and something is bad. That is what most people are doing these days because it's the only way to actually find how you're going to like something without buying it. Someone saying randomly that, oh yeah, IGN gave it a 10. What does that mean? You don't know who this guy is. You have to go and find out what other reviews they have done and then kind of try to find out what is going on. So you don't really have any idea what to expect from this review. That is a very antiquated feeling and only works if you have faith that this person is a professional. And to be honest, with all that stuff that is happening, it's everything but that. Everything but that, literally. Like everything but that. These persons are not objective. They have beliefs and they will give score to those beliefs, especially when it comes to diversity and stuff like this. I'm not going to get political. I don't care about those stuff. You do what you want. But we it has to be said. There are many 
many reviews out there from those publications that they give scores and they always talk about this kind of stuff like it's a requirement to have these days which is not it's not it's not at all it's made by them but doesn't mean that it's going to be for everyone and that's why a specific amount of people follow this kind of stuff that they kind of have similar ideology but not really about the games because they don't know who is going to review this game that is really the thing people that care about the gameplay and the story specifically and stuff like that as i said they're gonna have someone that they trust and they're gonna watch what they say maybe they're gonna go and watch even more people and see what other people also say but they're gonna have this one voice one two three voices maybe that they resonate for specific kind of content and that is the real reason why these websites are dying there is no other reason there is no anything crazy there is no conspiracy and stuff like that the reason that they are dying is because of this not because they have the same opinion but because the medium has evolved and they haven't they don't have personalities they build those personalities there with some controversial shows that they do some podcasts and stuff like that but who cares only people in the industry try to echo those things people that are making reviews and twitter people only those people care to watch those kind of things because all of them are scripted and they're like controversy there is the xbox guy there is the playstation guy there is the nintendo guy come on man like these kind of things are just ridiculous it's like they're trying to imitate tv for people that are trying to escape tv so yeah this is my opinion for this kind of stuff um, if you want to leave a comment let me know about your opinion or maybe let me know your favorite youtubers about specific things for me mostly it's skill up and it's mort and sometimes i may watch others as well but mostly are those thank you for watching hope you have a great day and yeah see you next time